Hi. So the broad autism phenotype is those um, traits associated with autism that um, don't reach the threshold for diagnosis. And it's commonly found in, mem in family members of people with autism, but also members of the gen general population. And is associated with a number of other difficulties, including language difficulties and conversation difficulties, face processing difficulties, emotion recognition difficulties, social difficulties, stereotype behaviors, and rigidity. A um, study by Rubenstein and Chawla in 2018 um, took 71 studies that mentioned rates of broader autism phenotype and found a wide range of um, rates in those studies, but they also found that the broader autism phenotype is more common in multiplex families and also more common in males and females. Um, there are many different ways of measuring the broader autism phenotype, but today I'm going to be talking about the family history interview. This is a semi-structured um, interview that looks at both childhood and adult functioning and covers questions to do with language and communication, social skills, rigidity, um, and circumscribed interests, among other things. And it scores between zero and two, with zero being behavior that doesn't reach threshold, um, a score of one being um, showing a trait but not associated with impairment, and a score of two being associated with impairment. Um, from identifying the broader autism phenotype, a factor score um, was developed, derived, that uses 11 items, um, including things like lack of interest in con conversation, quality of reciprocal conversation, friendships, um, responsiveness to emotional cues, rigidity, and things like that. So when we're thinking about parent-mediated intervention, a number of studies have demonstrated the benefits of um, parent-mediated intervention on child outcomes, um, including the pa PACT study and the PACT follow-up study. PACT is the um, pediatric autism communication trial, and it was followed up on six years later um, to look at whether, um, whether gains had been continued in that time. Um, this is a, a ran this was a randomized control trial of a parent-mediated social communication intervention. Um, so the speech and language therapist worked with the parents to deliver the therapy to their child to try and help improve their social communication. And they used video feedback, so watching videos with the therapist to um, talk about different ways of um, interacting to help draw those behaviors out with their child and improve that social communication. They found that there, in the therapy arm of the study, there were improvements in language and communication skills, um, increases in parent synchronous responses to the child, and increases in communication initiations by the child, as well as reductions in the severity of autism symptoms. And these gains were maintained over six years. However, when we're thinking about parent-mediated intervention, we need to consider how um, parental broader autism phenotype features might influence the way a parent will interact with that intervention and how that might impact on um, outcomes for the child. As far as I'm aware, there's only one study to date that's been published looking at the impact of broader autism phenotype on um, child outcomes following parent-mediated intervention. Um, Parr and colleagues took um, 18 mothers who had been involved in a parent-mediated media, uh, intervention and did the FHI with those parents to get the level of their um, of the broader autism phenotype. And 12 were in the low broader autism phenotype group and six were in the high group. Um, outcome measures included language and um, parent-child interaction measures as well as autism severity they found that um, the FHI score was significantly associated with the change in parent-child inter interaction from baseline to endpoint. Um, and they also found that, um, so that the parents and the, the children in the low broader autism phenotype group um, 
showed greater change in parent-child in interaction than those in the high group. They also found that um, the children improved in their receptive language, so the, um, the number of words that they understood, but not the number of words that they said. However, this was a very small pilot study, um, and it needed to be replicated with a much larger sample. So that's what, exactly what we did using the um, packed and packed follow-up data. So the um, children who took part in the study were completed a number of um, baseline measures before being randomized either into the therapy arm or into the treatment as usual arm. Um, measures included things to do with autism severity using the ADOS um, generic algorithm score and also um, things to do with parent-child communication using the dyadic communication measure for autism that looked at parent synchrony and, parent and child initiations. Um, this, these outcome measures were repeated 13 months after randomization, and then in the follow-up study, they were repeated again um, on average 5.75 years later. And in addition to this, we also used the FI, FHI to measure the broader autism phenotype in the group. 121 of the participants from the original PACT study completed the follow-up um, study, and of those, 102 completed the FHI. So we used, um, we imputed the missing FHI data and combined um, endpoint and follow-up and treated them as multivariate pairs in analysis um, and used structural equation, equation modeling to investigate the effect of FHI on parent mediated, into, on those child outcomes. The mean age of the children was 10.5 years at follow-up, and um, looking at the um, parent characteristics, 93 of the parents were female and nine were male in this study. And if you look at the bar chart on the right, uh, you can see the distribution of FHI scores, and so you can see it's quite a skewed distribution. Um, with the majority of parents showing little evidence for, um, for the broader autism phenotype in this study. Looking at the baseline from the PACT um, study, the FHI wasn't correlated with baseline um, ADOS for autism severity, nor with parental synchrony or child initiations. Um, it also, there was no, uh, at follow-up and at endpoint and follow-up, there was no main effect or moderation effect for autism severity or parent synchrony, but there was a marginally significant effect, um, main effect and moderation effect for child initiations. So, in this sample, um, the broad autism phenotype appears to have a limited role in outcomes following parent-mediated intervention. However, we need to consider the what might be influencing those findings. So the findings might have been influenced by the parent characteristics of the sample, um, as the majority of parents were female, and in that study by Rubenstein and Trolla, um, they found that the broader autism phenotype um, was more common in males than in females. As well, um, this might have influenced the relatively low FH F FHI scores, um, and that distribution might have made it quite difficult to identify an effect. It's also important to consider the nature of the PACT therapy. Because the speech and language therapists were working with the parents to deliver the intervention, they were already individualizing that therapy to a certain extent, extent to adapt it to the um, characteristics and personality of those of the parents who are delivering that therapy. So this might have mitigated any effects of the broader autism phenotype. It's also important to consider that there are a number of measures to use to measure um, the broader autism phenotype, and so they may have given different results as well. So what next? What does this mean for clinical practice and for research? Does this sample reflect what is seen in clinical practice? So for example, um, would that distribution of FHI for the broader autism phenotype would that be seen in a clinical population, or would um, you see higher rates of broader autism phenotype when you're not asking parents to volunteer for an intensive parent-mediated intervention? Um, as well, 
the majority of the parents in the sample were female, and is that what you would see in, in clinical practice? Would the majority of the parents who were interacting with um, services be those in, would, would they be the mothers, or would there be um, fathers involved as well? In terms of what we should do next for research, I'm not sure it would be beneficial to just go and do the study again with a different sample. Um, although it would be interesting to see if any other large parent-mediated interventions have measured BAP and see if they have um, found similar results or anything different. It could, if we want to know whether higher broader autism phenotype affects um, how parents engage uh, with a, a parent-mediated intervention and with those child outcomes, then it might be useful to selectively sample parents with a higher broad autism phenotype and um, compare them to lower broad autism phenotype. And it might also be useful to investigate with multiplex families because, uh, as Rubenstein and Trolla showed, there is higher rates of broader autism phenotype in those groups as well. I'd like to thank all of the parents and families who supported um, the PACT and the, and the PACT follow-up study. Um, I'd like to thank the Medical Research Council for, for funding the research. And I'd like to thank all of the authors and the PACT consortium um, for really driving forward this research. And thank you all for listening. Thank you, thank you, Heather. It was a very good speech. I, I like, liked uh, very much that you pointed out that the parent mediated intervention also synchronizing the communication between the child and the, and the families, and of course, it's extremely important. Um, but now I would like to ask whether anyone has any question, and I can see. No, I cannot see any hands up. So thank you again for your presentation.